Hello everyone. If you've watched before, welcome back. If not, just a quick rundown. We bought some property and we're going to build a pole barn, which you can see sitting back behind me there. And then hopefully we're going to build a house this year. Slate rock's no match for her. Well, if you said to yourself, that doesn't look like a woodworking shop to me, well, you'd be right for now, but hopefully it'll turn into one here before long. If you've not been here before, we bought some property, as I said earlier in this video, and we built this pole barn, but it's 40 by 72, and then our plans is to build a house next door. And so the reason we finished this space is so we could be up here while we are building the house and just try to simplify life a little bit. But what I've done in here is tried to lay this thing out for my shop and tried to not spend any extra money if I could avoid it so we could live in it in the meantime while we're building the house. So 
Anyway, I've got my cabinet set up. I've done all drawer bases. I went ahead and put a solid wood uh, countertop on those. That way I'll have good workbenches. But if you've seen any of my prior videos, I have a dust system ran underneath the concrete. And where you saw the refrigerator setting, that's where a miter saw will go. And then beyond that, a drill press. And I've got dust systems set up underneath, underneath those bays. So I'll be able to hook my equipment up. But right here in the center of the room, the table saw will sit somewhere right in here where I'm at. And that way I can rip down the hallway if I've got long stuff. And then I've got it stubbed up on the far wall as well. And that way I can tee off and hook to all my equipment over there. But one other thing I did in this building is I got metal everywhere on the walls and ceilings, but I ended up putting the metal backwards. So we've got essentially, we, we put it where you would typically put it up. We flipped it over, had them put the color on the other side. But what we're able to accomplish with that is we've got pretty much flat walls. So that worked out pretty well. I'll take you over and show you one little thing if you ever decide you want to do it that way that I would, I would do different. If you'll notice, we've got slit walls. So typically that rib would be facing out and we'd have this valley. But with this gives you a pretty flat surface to work with. But when you do that, you pick up this little bit of lip here to where typically that would be hidden. So if I were gonna do it again, I would have them scoot the metal over in their, in their machine to where this is a shorter lip and that way it would be recessed back into the valley there and you wouldn't, it wouldn't be as visible. But after you walk past it a few times, you don't even notice it. But when you're looking at it from this direction, you don't see it. But if you look at it this way, you can catch that lip. So it's not a big deal, but if I were gonna do it again, I'd have them adjust the metal a little bit, slide it over in their die, and that way you wouldn't have as much metal exposed. I was thinking before we moved up here, that we was gonna need some kind of table or island out of here to be able to eat on and work off of. So this was a workbench at our old place. So I threw a coat of paint on it to sort of match the decor. It's worked out pretty good. One other thing that I did try to do was think ahead on my electrical. So I've got 110 outlets pretty much four feet apart all the way around the interior of the shop here. But I went ahead and put a 220 over on the opposing wall. I've got a 220 plug, or actually just the wire pull there for it next to each 110. That way, I'd have the flexibility to hook up whatever I wanted to from that standpoint. And then down in the corner next to the garage door, I went ahead and wired in a 50 amp plug as well. So that way if I ever wanted a stick welder over there, I'd have enough juice to run it. But I, when I was first initially thinking about it, I said, Travis, you better think of every little nuance on this wiring because it's gonna be a pain because my meter box or my breaker box is recessed back in the metal. So it's flush with the extra, or the face of my metal. So you can't access the side panels to, you know, to run a new wire in. But one thing that uh, after building it, getting the metal up is I still have a wall cavity in behind my metal because of the six by six post. So I would be able to fish wires from the attic and be able to come down It'd be a little tricky getting a box, but you could probably punch a hole from the inside of the box and, and, and get it to work without having to take metal off to get in it. But I've still got some flexibility if I need to add something, but I wanted to try to make sure that I thought ahead and have everything here that I may need. So pretty pleased with it. I think it'll work out, but once we get set machines up in here, I'm probably have to tweak something, but hopefully it'll work. Well, I'm no pro builder by any means, but if you've got a similar project like this going on and got a question or curious about how I did something in here, feel free to leave it down in the comments and I'll do my best to give you the best answer I can give you. But for those of you who followed along for the last 12 months, I appreciate it. At least we've got one project done. We've got plenty more to go and uh, hopefully we can get a house break ground on a house here before long. I can't say that I'm looking forward to it, but uh, we're gonna try to get going here in the next month. Uh, I've got some fish structure to put in the pond. I'm gonna try to get it stocked here before long. But anyway, if you follow along, I appreciate it. If you wanna follow along on this next journey, we'll be happy to have you. But until the next time, we'll see you later. One other thing before I go, 
I would buy this 10 foot fan again. I'll tell you, if you got a bigger space and we'll move some air, those babies will do it. Thank you.